This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, this, this is the third lecture on um, the chapter on averages and dispersion. In the first one, we looked at the uh, two types of distributions, uh, discrete and continuous. Um, and we looked at the um, different charts you could be expected to do, be aware of. Uh, in the last lecture, I looked at measures of average, arithmetic mean, median and mode. But the example we looked at was where we had discrete variables. Uh, we're now going to look at mean, median, mode again, but where the continuous variables. So if you look at example three, it's those total wages again. And so what did we have? Not to 500. Uh, 500 to 1,000, uh, 1,000 to 1,500, 1,500 to 2,000, 2,000 to 2,500, 2,500 to 3,000. Uh, and the frequency, I'm leaving a space, you'll see why in a moment, but the frequency, uh, 1, 4, 8, 19, 14, 6, total 52. And first of all, we're going to look at the arithmetic mean. And I went through the idea before, basically we're adding all the observations up and dividing by the total number. But the problem here, of course, is that first observation. What was it? Somewhere between 0 and 500, but we don't know what it was. Was it 100? Was it 400? I don't know. Uh, these four, they were all somewhere between 500 and 1,000, but we don't know, you know, were they 550, were they 820, or whatever. And so what we do, we replace each range by the midpoint, which does make it perhaps rather approximate, but we take the midpoint and we say, right, instead of 0 to 500, we take 250. Instead of 500 to 1,000, the midpoint is 750, halfway between them. Uh, 1250, 1750, 2250, 2750. So we're taking the midpoint, which if you think about it, take that range, in a sense, it means we're assuming those eight were evenly spread between 1,000 and 1,500, and therefore, on average, they were 1,250, uh, which, of course, may not be the case, but we've no choice. If it's continuous, we let the midpoint represent the range. And so that becomes x. And it now is just like we did before. Uh, ignore the original range, it's as though there was 1 at 250, 4 at 750, 8 at 1250, and so on. So we take f times x to get the total of them all. 250, uh, 3000, uh, 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 10,000. That's a bit big for me. 1750 times 19. 33,250, 14 times 2,250, 31,500, uh, 6 times 2,750, 16,500. And so the total of them all, or sigma fx, if you remember, 250 plus 3,000, 10,000. 33,250, 31,500, 16,500. The total is 94,500. So that's the total of all the observations on the assumption I've made. Uh, the total frequency, there are 52 observations. And so the arithmetic mean, the total divided by the observations, is, oh, sorry, the symbol again is x bar. 94,500 divided by 52. Uh, 
1817 to the nearest dollar. And does that make sense? Uh, you know, remember, the average must be somewhere between 0 and 3,000, and it is. Uh, but there we are. So really, exactly the same as we did for discrete, just that one extra bit, uh, let the midpoint represent the range. The next one, the median. Now, this is a bit messy, it depends exactly what they want in the question. The median, remember, is the centrally occurring observation if they were all arranged in order of magnitude. And so what we want is the value of, well, I said in the last lecture, and I explained why, look back if you need, it's the value of the n plus 1 over tooth observation, where n is the total number, which here is the value of the, there are 52, 52 plus 1 over 2, 53 divided by 2, 26.5 observation. So if we were able to list them all, all 52 from the smallest to the highest, we'd want to count along and find the value of number 26.5. Well, as before, sorry keep writing this down, but we'll look at the cumulative. Maybe there. Oh dear. Uh, the frequencies, what was it? 1, 4, 8, 19, 14, 6. So if we look at the cumulative or the total frequencies, the first one took us up to 500. Up to a thousand were another four, so five was up to a thousand in total. Another eight up to fifteen hundred, so a total of thirteen took us up to fifteen hundred. A total of um, another nineteen, thirty-two. Thirty-two were between naught and two thousand. Forty-six were between naught and two and a half thousand. And of course fifty-two, all of them were between naught and three thousand. So, where is the 26.5th? Well, the 13th one is between, took us up to 1500. Uh, the 32nd one took us up to 2000. So, surely the 26.5th one is somewhere between 1500 and 2000. And check the question carefully. Because you might simply be asked for the median class or group. We want the value of the 26.5. The 26.5 observation must be somewhere between 1500 and 2000. And so if they just say what's the median class, then there is your answer. Somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000. A slightly silly, perhaps, but we can put an exact value on it by assuming that the 19 observations are spread evenly between 1,500 and 2,000. And we say, ah, if that's the 19th, I beg your pardon. Sorry, 13 took us up to 1500. So we say, if that's the 13th observation, and that's the 32nd observation, what do we want? We want the 
26.5th observation, which is sort of somewhere between the two. And watch what we do. We say, well, it's going to be more than 1,500. <coughs> but, you know, is it 1,600? Is it 1,700? Is it 1,800? Well, we say, in total, there are 19 observations between 1,500 and 2,000. We want one, we're at the 13th, not the 26th now, we want one that's 13 and a half through it. From 1,500 to 2,000 is 19 people. Or 19 observations, I'm sorry, not people. Uh, from 13 to 26 and a half, the difference is 13 and a half observations. So we say, okay, it's 13 and a half out of 19. We say it's that proportion of the difference of 500. Again, we know it's more than 1,500. We know that an extra 19 is an extra 500. To get to 26 and a half, we want an extra 13 and a half. So we take that proportion. And what do we end up with? Uh, 1,500 plus, it comes to 355.26. It comes to 18.55. So a bit messy. And as I say, do check carefully what's required. If it's the medium class, well, you should have no problem. 1,500 to 2,000. But if you're actually required to put a figure on it, then, well, it's pointless for me to keep repeating, uh, you would put 18.55. Now then, before I leave the median, and then we've got a really easy one, don't worry. But before I leave the median, in fact, to get that figure, the 1855, is one use we can make of the ogive, which I dealt with in the first lecture. Let me show you. Let me draw the ogive again. So for the last time, let's write it all up. 0 to 500, 500 to 1,000. I could just wind back, but then we're up and down. And the frequency is 1, 4, 8, 19, 14, 6. And the cumulative frequencies 1, 5, 13, 32, 46, 52. Now, if you uh, think back to when I went through the O-Guide, I uh, appreciate I'm not going to draw it precisely, and you won't be drawing one in the exam, but they could check, you know how we could use it. Uh, but when I drew the ogive earlier, what did we do? We have the, the classes are on the bottom, 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000. And up here, the cumulative frequency. Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, nearly 50. And we went to the top of each range. So 500 took us up to one observation. 1,000 took us up to five. 1,500 took us up to 13, 2,000 took us up to 32, 2,500 up to 46, um, and 3,000 up to 52. 
And then I said, we join them up with straight lines. Okay, now we've been through that and got to know what the uh, OGIV is. But the way we could use it for the median, we've already said that it's the value of, since there were 52 observations, it was the value of number 26.5. Now then, remember what I did before? I said it was in the range 20 to 30. Uh, the range, sorry, where was it? 1500 to 2000. Well, 26.5 is something like there. And it is in the range 1500 to 2000, but because we'd drawn a straight line, Effectively, it would be assuming that those 19 in that range were spread evenly between 1,500 and 2,000. And so, if we looked at 26.5 there, that would be the value of the median. Now, mine was only, obviously, the graph isn't precise, and again, you won't be drawing this graph in the exam. But had it been precise, you could have read off, and that figure would have been exactly 1855. So, a bit messy, sorry. Uh, of the three, it's the only one that really sort of is messy. Because the final one, the mode, Uh, and remember, I said it was the most frequently occurring observation, but certainly in your exam, you can only be asked for the modal class or group, which is easy. It's the most frequently occurring group. And if you look at the original table, which is the most frequently occurring? Well, it's 19. It's the range, the group, 1,500 to 2,000. There are, in fact, ways of putting an exact value on it, which are a bit odd. But you can't be asked that in the exam. All you can be asked is the modal class. And there it is, 1,500 to 2,000. And just as with the previous exam on discrete variables, uh, there can be more than one. You know, if two of the groups at a frequency of 19, fine, there'd be two modal classes. Uh, normally, certainly like exam time questions, there is only the one. So, there we are. There are the measures of average, mean, median, mode. Be clear what the definitions of them are. I've explained, but it's typed up in the notes. And, of course, make sure you can come up with the figures. Uh, we're not there yet for this chapter. The final bit, which will be the next lecture, we'll look at what we call measures of dispersion.